everyone, Joe here from Action X. Welcome to What's in the Tube, and welcome back. If this is your uh, when seventh, yeah, seventh rookie season four episode review, it's gonna be bittersweet. Um, but I'll say this again at the end of the episode. Um, we're going off the air for three weeks because of the Thanksgiving holidays. It sucks. It really sucks. But we had almost seven consecutive weeks of the rookie, which. Last year, that was already half the order, and given the pace they're going, I think we're going back to the traditional 20 from last year, which I'm like, oh, thank God, we still have plenty more um, rookie stuff to go. Um, but this was like kind of like, they're very smart and strategic about the episodes they are releasing in terms of like when they're airing, because I'm pretty sure they went into this, how they wrapped up this episode, knowing that, yeah, we're going to go off the air in three weeks, so when we do come back, it's going to be a pretty interesting um, winter finale when we can't, when we come back. Um, so, because with this was a, with this with this week's episode, it was mostly the balance of serious, more serious in nature than comedic. I mean, we still had our traditional comedic subplot. Normally, it wasn't a full on, um, a full on thing. But honestly, I'm gonna say this: this was a really well done episode of the rookie. I don't think it's my favorite. I definitely do believe if there was more of like a. It's kind of tricky because, like, when you do these shows, especially when you start to get into, the, like, the longer side of things in terms of, you know, how many seasons you're doing, you got to be very careful not to retread old ground, which is what kind of what they do here, which is, I understand why the primary focus wasn't on what actually happened. But I will say that even when we do get the focus on that, it was really well done, and honestly... The rookie had its own Joker this week, and I believe that is the one of the highest compliments I can ever give the show to create such a character like that. And I'm actually hoping we get to see more of that character down the line. I, I think they leave the door open for that, but we'll see how that goes, really. But through and through, I, I, still, I really enjoyed this episode of the rookie. I really did, and I want to say it get, delivered one of the best... Like, it's not no, one of Noah's defining moments, but it is something up there that is going to be remembered, hopefully, for uh, for some time to come, in, in, in my opinion. And also solidify the a relationship. And it also kind of put the, the needle pin on one of the um, one of the longer story arcs they're trying to do on the rookie. Like, this was like kind of like the first season. They're like doing something that isn't like one episode, break, 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 and then we come back later on for the resolution. This is something that we were leading into for a while, and I think they did it fairly well in my opinion i got a little confused for a second but they it still worked out in my opinion so let's go for the butcher recap and talk about this week's episode of the rookie so we begin with picking up from last week um the, the house explosion for the chief um nolan and lopez are fine they're a little um beaten up but um nolan's girlfriend got gets a a um a piece of wood in her leg sat i honestly thought again last week with the promo i thought is she going to lose her leg? Is is that going to be her thing? And like, thankfully, no. She just gets a wood impaled in her leg. And again, still trying to get up. Still trying to figure out whether or not her chief was actually involved in any of the killings. I'm still trying to get up, but no one tells her to stay down. They call in for, the ho for support. They send her to the hospital. She's going to be fine, thankfully. She's going to have to stay off her leg for a while and... They do recommend for her to like have a caregiver, have someone at home to take care of her. No one volunteers to let her stay at his place, um, more of a full time basis. She is just like, nah, I don't want to do this. I can take care of myself. And I was like, please, just um, l let me do this. And he, he, she finally uh, laments and you know gets accepted in. But um, everyone else on the on the investigative side of things thinks that okay, the case is over. He's dead. All the evidence is gone. We're just gonna we're gonna consider this case to be closed. Um, we got to the next morning where she's, um, what's her name? What's her name? <sighs> Damn, my brain is hurting me. Yeah, no, it's, 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 it's not about being you. It's not about you, my brain. I apologize. Uh, so Nolan's girlfriend, uh, manages to s agree to stay with Nolan. And it's going to be, an, it was an interesting dynamic for me to see, for me to see because this is kind of like the, the fastest relationship no one's ever been in because with Chen, there wasn't any sort of like, you know, availability to accelerate because of obviously the um, the secrecy of the, of the nature of the relationship. 
Then you had his, his next relationship where they were considering to have a baby, but no one was like, I can't. I want to explore this new chapter in my life, not to be weighed out by another kid. And then with his, um, his ex um, with the doctor, um, they never really went that far to consider them to, to go to that level. So for me, it's like this is kind of like new territory for me to see no one in this situation. Um, back at the precinct, I believe, yeah, I'm believing they're wrapping up the the bet thing from the treasure hunt between Chen and Bradford. Um, but sadly, they're kind of at a stalemate because, you know, the, this is these two. They're just stubborn as hell. They're not going to admit the other was right for once. So they want um, Gray to come in and kind of, you know, be the tiebreaker, you know, just kind of like give us something to do so we can finally settle who is the winner. And Gray's like, fine, you know what? First one to get this arrest or for Bradford or you with this arrest, you win. Gray's very minimum this week, to be honest with you. He's kind of been a little minimum lately. I kind of wish for him to like kind of take the lead again. Well, not the lead lead, but like kind of be a little bit more centered again. Um, which the things that they, he assigns Chen and Bradford to do is one is, I believe confessing to, to be a dealer. And the other one is to see if like, you can find someone that's tampering with fire safety equipment, I believe. So, okay, yeah, that 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 should be interesting. So, uh, we do get a brief cutaway where um, where our good old Wesley is trying to defend one of Elijah's many many crooks. Uh, but again, the crook believes, hey, Elijah promised me you're gonna get me off, and Wesley's being honest, like, look, it's a very difficult case to save you. But the crook said, nah, man, you, Elijah promised me I'm not going to jail. You got to find the solution. And that's mainly Wesley's kind of like uh, attitude that everyone's giving him. Like, you got to find the solution. I know it seems impossible, but you are the lawyer. You need to find the loophole. You got to do what it takes so that Elijah doesn't get taken down. Um, that's basically it. Even with a very hard, uh, hard statement from an eyewitness, it's kind of ironclad for this guy to go to jail. But, um,. Yeah, but, uh, and also Gray does kind of like let him in, like, yeah, I know what you're doing, I know. You haven't crossed any lines just quite yet, but the moment you do, you're going to get the spar. You can get arrested for aiding a criminal, so think about this carefully before you cross any sort of line. So, there's a lot of elements here, because, like, obviously, of course, Wesley knows what's right. He had to do what he had to do to protect, to get his wife back. And now that he has his son involved, it kind of creates this, like, he's stuck in this position kind of similar to what um what was that guy from what the heck is this did i get bruising or something i just noticed something in my arm i must have did I'll, I'll i'll worry about that later what was i yeah so um yeah where do we go from here uh, i just want to get rid of the comedic storyline first because that's not really like everything else is a little bit more majorly important and they don't really get much involvement in the, in the rest of the stuff um so china bradford trying to find i are going to w w are picking out like you know confessions to do kind of like to get this penal thing this penal contest over with I, that's a horrible analogy i'm gonna shut up there so they're trying to figure this out. They're trying to get more people. And then they have this like lead that this woman gives them. Like, hey, I know this woman who wants to hire a hitman so his, her husband can get killed. And they're like, okay, this is interesting. Let, let's get involved here. Because now that they know about it, they have to get involved. So what, using a little bit of, an, of a stakeout undercover thing that um, Chen used to do, they decide to have Bradford pitch as a, uh, as a hitman to get confession from the this woman the um the wife to kill her husband and chen's making a little fun of bradford about his outfit appearance and again it's nice to have a little banter between them it's a, it's it's nice it, it showcases how far they come in their relationship um the woman does show up bradford acts to be a hitman she's like oh look at you you're like really good looking maybe we can have some fun before you can uh, kill my husband which i'm like damn this woman is aggressive this woman is like very not giving a fuck right now um, Bradford plays along for a little bit, but once Bradford manages to get the confession out of her, it's over. It's done. She's arrested. She's done for. Um, I believe. Is there anything else in that matter that I do remember? I know. I know. Chen calls in um, to just check in on on Nolan's girlfriend. That's that's um, basically it. I don't think they have much more of an involvement afterwards. Um, now that I'm thinking about it, yeah, I don't, I don't remember the top of my head. I think that was it for them. Unless I'm forgetting something, I apologize. They, they that, that storyline was kind of like one of the reasons why I didn't like put this higher on my list. 
Um, on Wesley's front, of course, he, he gets uh, his weekly visit from Elijah. And Elijah's just repeating similar stuff that, hey, look, you are my lo you are this guy you are my guy you need to get off my guys not in that way but you have to figure out a way to get my my guy out of jail you got to find a way destroy the credibility of the witness do what you need to do so uh, Wesley has no choice he visits the um, the eyewitness and it seems like the eyewitness is not backing down like look I saw what I saw I put in my confession I have no real I have no real drive to be dri driven out of here so you're gonna have to do something else. Um, Bradford manages to, not Bradford, Wesley manages to tail off a bit. Um, trying to find something to assist him in his matter. Um, but he does find a shotgun underneath his, um, the guy's bedroom and he assumes that it's unregistered. So he calls in the, uh, the police department to come in and, you know, take the gun away so that at least a part of his credibility would be destroyed and it could be enough to get this guy, uh, released from jail. But, um, we'll, we'll, we'll get to all that better because back to Nolan's case. No one's enjoying a delicious pancake feast from his from his girlfriend, which I'm like, I my, none of my none of my exes ever gave me pancakes. So I'm like, I, I'm very I'm very hurt that no one got this. I'm very hurt. Um, anyway, continuing from that point, um, what uh, his girlfriend is trying to come up with some more leads as you know she's bedroom trying to figure out was the chief truly responsible? And there's a case that like yeah he wasn't. As because someone, one of his friends, calls in and says, "Yeah, well, on this supposed day, he did a, he did a supposed arson incident. He was in the hospital all week. So, and since the mo matches everything else, it couldn't be him. So and they're like, okay, so the the real killer's on the loose out there. Um, they just need to find him. So no one goes into the station under her um, recommendation so that he could do what he can to try and find out who actually did it. This other weird firefighter shows up as well, kind of giving." <laughs> Um, some gifts for, I think her name's Bailey. I think that's, I think that's, um, Nolan's name. I think, uh, Nolan's girlfriend, I believe. I'm not sure. I'll figure that out when we come back from the break. Um, so they're all trying to figure out any sort of leads. Um, they're, they're visiting like survivors, but they're not really giving them much information. The only thing that one of them does give, the, give Nolan and Harper is that, um, the guy, he, he manages to catch a glimpse of the killer. And the only thing that he got out of it was a, a burn mark at the back of his, in the, in his back. That's all he was able to get out of it, but it was enough to kind of like, you know, give them something to work with. But as the end of the, the end of the day comes in, no one revises the, the house again, trying to find some sort of new angle or, or clue. Uh, his girlfriend calls in begging him like, look, you worked long enough. You can try again tomorrow. Just come home. I'm, I'm bored. <laughs> That's the extent. Like I'm bored. Just come home. Um, no one's on his way out, but that, that creepy dude from the station, um, is there at first, like it was seemingly to be playing that like, he's just there to like plant a little memorial, um, um, candle fest for him. And it seemed all innocent and fine, but then he bends over to like light the candles and no one knows there's the burn mark on his back. So we know it's like, ah, shit, it's him. And like once no one was staring at it and the guy looked back and was like, yeah, he knew like, okay, yeah, no one needs to be taken out right now. So no one's about to call the police, but he gets, he gets uh, hit by, by the guy's car and gets um, knocked out by it with knockout gas. Uh, he wakes up at an abandoned wa a factory the next day, really far off the beaten path. And since no one's phone is once again, I'm, I'm assuming destroyed. I'm honestly want to know like how much Nolan pays on his phone bill to pay for like all these replacement phones. I'm pretty sure at some point they're going to be like, there's got to be some sort of police option just in case they, there's got to be. Um, so no one's tied up. The guy's very strategic. Like this is like the scary thing. He's a very strategic, st strategic killer, but also he's kind of like a maniac. Cause he, like, he's just talking about like how much he enjoyed his first murder and then everything afterwards has been trying to replicate that, but he hasn't been able to, and he's just keeps trying and trying and trying to get that high again. And, um, what he does to know is he actually breaks his legs so that, well, not breaks his leg, kind of like, yeah, yeah, he breaks his legs so that no one couldn't really escape. Just to play a little game with no one. Like, he knows no one's going to die, but he's like, he wants to have a little fun and give him a little hope that there is a chance he might escape when in reality for him, is like, no, nah, you have no chance. This is where you die. Um, so after a while, after some mild monologuing and some very creepy ass harmonica music. Um, he lets Nolan go, but Nolan's very disoriented. His leg is busted. Um, his his vision is blurred. 
Uh, he's trying to get out of it the fa- best he can, but it's just too much. He tries punching himself in the thigh to kind of get him get him to wake up a little bit, which works kind of. Um, I want to say eventually Nolan hits a certain room and he's able to kind of like in 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 inca- incapitate the guy for a bit using some using a shelving of pipes, uh, which manages to disarm him in his pistol, which allows Nolan to at least get his um. His um, restrictions free, but um, his leg is still busted, and the guy just whips out a shotgun. So I'm like, no one's fucked. Um, so continuing from that point, um, no one's trying to get is, is able to like run a little faster, but you know it's still not enough for him to get away because in fact this guy has a shotgun. Uh, he hides into some offices, um, trying to find some sort of weapon, um, doing everything he can to barricade himself um, behind a lot of other stuff. But the guy just breaks for for all of them. No one does eventually find a, a rusty, um, a rusty scissor. And this guy's very creepy. He's like literally saying like, this is the moment in the movie where like we have this like very quiet, very atmospheric scene. And then a jump stair comes around and like you kind of get back into the action, which is kind of like what he does to just kind of ruin the moment. Uh, once he sucks on, stuck on reloading, um, no one manages to get the jump on him. Um, rams some, some, um, rusty knives into his, st- not knives, um, scissors into his stomach uh, which is an, an inf- eventually enough for him to just kind of like walk away and escape, but he manages to to whoop out another fucking gun, a freaking um, sorry, uh, another pair of another another AR, and he's and he's about to start shooting. I'm like, oh great, this is it for Nolan. This is it once again, the end for um, John Nolan. May he rest in peace. But no, it's not. It's no. He puts the, he leaves the safety on, and he actually gives no one another leg up to escape. No, this sounds like deuces. I'm out of this building. I need to get out of here. Uh, he manages to reach the car first. Uh, manages to call 911 to get to get them to his location. Um, no one thankfully manages to ram the dude. Uh, puts him down for the count, um, restrains him. And no one's like, I'm done. This was like, I think this is probably the most exhausted no one's been in his life. So, but he, he once again, he saves the day. He, he beats the dude. Um, I believe, yeah, we, so yeah, that's it for the dude. That's it for the guy. And honestly, yeah, I, this character, I, I forgot his name, but like he really sells that like the crazy sociopath where it's like he's very methodical in the ways he kills people and also by burning the evidence um afterwards but just also just the way that he acts is like dude this is a serial killer right here like there's a serial killer level here so shout out to the actor who, to uh who played that um i want to say yeah so no one's in the hospital he's gonna do fine he's just gonna have a couple more scars that's it uh, also, I forgot to mention, um, Wesley, um, is heading out in the garage in the parking lot. Oh, I forgot. There was another scene with Wesley. He has an argument with Lopez since Wesley comes home late. He forgets to pick up food and he and Lopez have an argument about that. And, you know, obviously Wesley's distraught because of like what he just did. He basically destroyed a part of his credibility. So he's not feeling himself. Uh, I know he does run into Elijah and his goon. Because I don't know what Elijah was mad about. I think his guy does eventually get sentenced to prison or to jail. But I think Wes is like, look, I followed your advice. The guy has very little credibility. So after that point, there's literally nothing else I can do. So I think Elijah, I know he backs off after that point. But I, I believe he's just going to double down on like the threatening to to um, to Wesley from that point. So while no one and you know is resting, you know his girlfriend by his side, you know, kind of, you know, kind of like they're ready to recuperate for the ironic next three weeks. We're off. Uh, but Wesley pulls over Lopez and says, like, I have a problem. I need help. He's finally ready to admit like, what his deal is, what he did to kind of get her back in the first place. So, uh, yeah, so that's um, that's the cliffhanger. Wesley's going to need help on the Elijah front now, which will it end well? Who knows? We'll figure that out when we come back um, in December. So the 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 aspect of knowing in the warehouse with that dude, that's why I was like saying before, like that is something like, you have to be careful on because, like, no, uh, an officer getting kidnapped and, you know, being, like, pushed to this really extreme level was kind of like how Ch- Chen was back in Season 2. So I didn't really want them to re-explore that again for the whole episode. Um, th- I will give them credit for adding in, like, the other storylines to kind of, like, you know, move the attention away from that so it's not, like, this big, like, manhunt thing. But at the same time, like, 
it would have been cooler to kind of get more inside the psyche of that killer, like a little bit more. Like I'm pretty sure, yeah, he was just like a like just a one time villain. We'll probably never see him again, most likely. But it would have been fun to like really get to explore him and his mind a little bit more, playing a little bit of a psychotic game onto Nolan, which we got a little bit of in this episode. But I would have liked a little bit more. Um, the Wesley Elijah stuff it is kind of heating up now. Then now it's probably going to be the main focus now. I like Brian J. McLaren's. I really does. I really hope... Um, I don't think next episode is going to tackle that. But when we do come back properly with that storyline, I really hope it isn't like a one episode and they're done type thing. As much as I like Elijah and, you know, I, I, I would make the case that like, make him the villain for season four. Um, just put it out a little longer. Just a little bit longer. Like, don't like... Let's not like fully get rid of him just quite yet. There's still more you can do with him. So I, I that's what I hope out of. And the Chen and Bradford stuff was funny. More bonding between them from this uh, boss gopher relationship. It's fun. Um, no, um, Harper's new boat I forgot wasn't on this week. So that's kind of funny. Like he's on one week and then he's off one the next week. So we might see him again next time. Who knows? Um, but no, honestly, this was another. This was an outstanding episode of the Rookie. Just on that warehouse part alone, it's not one of my favorites. Just because of the other stuff they had to do to kind of like just make sure it's not repeating any tropes. But still, another outstanding episode of The Rookie. Um, definitely high up there among my favorites. Just not one of the best. So, I'm going to give this episode two thumbs up. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you think of this week's episode of The Rookie. I'm always down for conversations down below, as always. And I believe that's going to do for me tonight, everyone. So, if you're unaware, this has been What's of the Two from ActionX. Reviewing every episode in the fourth season of The Rookie. If you want to know what we're doing normally, What's of the Two, besides our Rookie episode reviews. We are currently doing Stargirl reviews each and every Wednesday mornings after a brand new episode, normally on Tuesday nights on the CW or free the next day on the CW app. Um, this Wednesday is our season two review, which will wrap up our it will wrap up our our run for Stargirl for the year. So check that out. Uh, we're also doing Walker season two episode reviews each and every Friday mornings after a brand new episode on Thursday nights on the CW or free the next day on the CW app. We're also doing Doom Patrol Season 3 reviews each and every Saturday mornings after a brand new episode, normally on Thursdays on HBO Max. This week we have the Season 3 review. Yeah, the Season 3 review. And also on Sunday night, on Sunday mornings we have Nancy Drew Season 3 episode reviews after a brand new episode on Friday nights on the CW free the next day on the CW app. Um, yeah, that's it. So, But if you don't care about The Rookie, I'm sad to say we're on Thanksgiving break. This week, after this week, a lot of our shows are going on Thanksgiving break, so it's going to be a while before I see you again. Uh, but, again, we'll be back in December to kind of resume out the rest of the 2021 episode, then do it all over again in 2022. So, uh, yeah, but hopefully y'all enjoy your Thanksgiving break. I will. Uh, What's of the Two is kind of um, wrapping up production a little bit less um, with all of our shows kind of wrapping up for the year. So, I hope you enjoy your Thanksgiving holiday. But, again, if you're unaware, this has been What's of the Two from Action X. Uh, please subscribe to us on youtube.com slash videos if you want to see more of us because you can also ring that bell for notification when our next rookie review is live which is normally each and every monday mornings please also like favor share the review if you want to but it helps us get us out to, to other members of the rookie nation who have yet to discover us helps us be that the youtube algorithm that hits me ever so much in life and as well as sharing us for free here on the interwebs and please also uh, follow us on social media to stay up to date with any sort of updates for the channel but until december uh, for all you members of the Rookie Nation, I'll see you all then. Again, enjoy your Thanksgiving holidays. Spend time with your family. Eat a lot of turkey. I'll see you all then. But until then, stay safe out there. Be good to each other. And as always, peace out.